October, everyone. And to celebrate this great season, I thought I'd talk about one of my all-time favorite movies, Horror Express. Um, Horror Express stars Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, who play two rival scientists that have to work together in order to stop a creature or a monster that got loose aboard a train and is killing people. Now, since it stars both Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, it has led a lot of people to believe that this is a Hammer movie, even though it's not. Although it does really feel like a Hammer movie at times. It's very cheesy, corny, you know, a very ridiculous movie at times, but very entertaining. This one doesn't get nearly as much attention as other 70s horror movies. Uh, films like John Carpenter's Halloween, or Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, those two get mentioned a whole lot more than this one, and I feel this one really deserves more attention. It's a great film. It's a very fun movie to watch. It's got an interesting plot, likable and interesting characters, uh, great performances, again, by Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. This is a B movie, and they're treating it like they're trying to win an Oscar. Um, I love seeing Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in anything. This is easily one of my favorite movies of theirs. It is about Christopher Lee. He plays a scientist who discovers a frozen caveman type thing and brings it back to study. And he you know, puts it on a train to be transported. And as it turns out, it's still alive and gets loose and starts killing people. But it's the way it kills people is what I find very interesting. This movie may or may not be based very loosely on Who Goes There by John W. Campbell, which was adapted into the 50s movie The Thing from Another World and the 1982 John Carpenter movie The Thing. As it turns out, the caveman creature is not a caveman. It's actually the host of a prehistoric alien. The way in which it kills people it absorbs that person's uh, character traits, its personality, its memory, and very much like The Thing, it takes on the characteristics of its victim. Now, it doesn't body swap. It, it does later in the movie when somebody shoots the host of the alien. The alien transports itself into the body of another person. And then the rest of the movie is spent trying to figure out who the creature is or who the alien is. The audience knows who it is, but the characters don't know who it is. Um, so they have to spend the whole movie trying to figure out who the alien is. And it's very suspenseful. And then instead of an ice station, they're on a train, but that they're still isolated. Though. Again, very much like the thing. So if you want to, you can consider this an adaptation of the book. I do. So I, I put it up there with the other thing movie. One of my favorite things about this movie is the characters. I love the way they interact with one another. Um, all the dialogue is great. Um, when Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee are interacting together, it's very entertaining. Like I said, I love seeing them in anything and this is easily one of my favorite movies of theirs. I've heard a lot of people describe this movie as sort of like an early episode of Doctor Who, like one of the episodes from the 70s. And yeah, I can, I can kind of see that. It's very cheesy and hokey, and the science in this movie doesn't make any sense. They take a sample of the creature's eye, and they can see past memories through with its blood. Like, they take a sample of the creature's blood, and they look at it, and they can see pictures of dinosaurs and a picture of the Earth. It's, it doesn't make any sense at all, but I absolutely love just weird out there sci-fi concepts like this. It, it doesn't make any sense. One of my favorite characters in this movie is this crazy Russian monk named Bujardo. He's always rambling on about Satan and the devil. It's very, very ridiculous. Um, he's the actor who played him is hamming it up the whole movie and he's great. I love every single character in this movie. All of them have really great dialogue moments. They all have great interactions with one another. It's rare that a movie like this, especially a B movie like this, has really interesting characters. A lot of B movies that you see have very bland and unoriginal characters. 
uh, but the writing in this one is very good and very strong. Another thing I really love about this movie is the soundtrack. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, I highly recommend checking it out on YouTube. I can't play any of it because I don't know whether or not it's copyrighted. Um, and speaking of copywriting, this movie is in the public domain. So it's one of those movies that you can find everywhere. It's gotten a million different DVD releases. It's gotten a few Blu-ray releases and it's even free to watch on YouTube. So it's a very easy movie to find. Hell, I own two copies of it on two different DVD box sets. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's really, really good. Um, I don't wanna to spoil too much of it. I know I talked a little bit about what happens, um, but I think it's definitely worth finding and watching. It's a great movie, has really good atmosphere, really good character moments, really good acting. I mean, just all around a very solid movie. This feels like one of those movies that ended up in the public domain completely by accident. A lot of movies that you see end up in the public domain are very crappy, low budget movies. Um, and I feel like a lot of those movies ended up in the public domain for a reason. This one I feel like was completely by accident, much like Night of the Living Dead. In conclusion, Horror Express is an excellent movie. Um, it's, you know, very atmospheric. It's a great movie to watch on Halloween. It's a very chilling movie and I highly recommend it.